How's it going everybody? My name is Liam and welcome back to the Liam's Plants channel. Today we are going to be doing another plant spotlight. We're going to be taking a look at another large foliage plant that I have. This is a plant I've had for quite a long time. We've had a pretty good journey together so I am very excited to show you guys the Aglonema Silver Bay. So the Aglonema Silver Bay is a very big foliage plant. This is a very basic plant as well. In the plant world there are lots of these very easy to care for, do well in pretty low light, but very beautiful large plants. The Aglonema has quickly become one of my favorites for that reason. This was one of the first plants that I ever purchased when I moved to Chicago and has been with me through all of the ups and downs of my plant journey. So out in nature, the Aglonema, I don't know how to classify it, but it is just a plant that stays on the ground. It will grow up and produce leaves, very large foliage leaves, every now and then it will produce flowers, but most people do not grow this plant for the flowers, they grow this plant for the very pretty foliage that it makes. There's lots of nice variations in color. I do actually have another Aglonema, very, very small, that is called the Lucky Red, which blushes very pinky and red in enough light. But jumping right into the journey with this guy, September 29th, 2021, that was a long time ago, was the first photo I took of this plant. That was the day that I got the plant, and it was very, very small compared to what you're seeing in front of you here. It probably only hit about halfway up where it is now. Leaves were all very small and none of them had some very distinct characteristics. They were all just pretty basic leaves, but I did like the pattern and I had no idea how beautiful this plant could get with some time. So when I purchased this plant, it was in store. There is a local nursery just right down the street, which did have this guy. I believe it was in a four inch pot and I bought it. It was in completely peat moss with no perlite and that was an ideal, but we'll get into to all these soil requirements later on. So the second photo I have of this guy is not a great photo, but it was on April 1st here. I took this photo because the plant was growing, it was doing well, and given how large this plant is, sometimes taking pictures of large plants can be difficult. You have to move them, set them up, get the lighting right. So a lot of the pictures I have are just kind of like it's in the background or it's just a like a not a great high quality photo of this guy. But the plant was growing at this point. It was continuing to enlarge since I got it and it was clearly enjoying the conditions it was in. It wasn't in anything too fancy. It was sitting on a table probably about 12 inches away from the southern facing windows. So it was getting pretty moderate indirect light throughout the day. It was far enough from the windows that during the spring and summer months the sun didn't even actually ever hit the plant. It was just getting indirect light throughout the day. So the first really great photo I took of this guy and actually the last photo since now is on May 4th. I set this guy up on the ground and took a nice overhead shot. I do really love the growth that this guy was getting and it was pretty amazing seeing with more lighting and better conditions how much more vibrant and lively these leaves were getting. I don't know if it's easy to see on the camera but some of these lower leaves they don't have a whole lot of this white center stripe this very light green center stripe running down the middle. I'm sure my b-roll footage will be easier to see uh, this difference on but it had a lot of green on the outside and just this very narrow strip of light green, almost white on the inside. But as the plant continued to mature, get into better lighting conditions, you can see that these leaves quickly started to expand that center middle stripe of white minty green into pretty much the entire leaf. Hopefully it's showing up on camera, but these newest leaves that it's been pushing out are just so beautiful. They have very little of this dark green, just sort of dotting the edges of the leaves versus being most of the leaf. So I believe that is in correlation to the amount of light it's getting as it got more and more access to light. And as the plant continued to mature, the green portion of the leaf, which I believe probably absorbs more light than the rest of the leaf, was decreasing and the amount of lighter parts of the leaf was increasing. Now again, I am no expert. I don't know if that is technically if those parts of the leaf cannot photosynthesize but it was pretty enjoyable to see the leaves transform and the colors really begin to mature. Let me actually flip the plant just so you guys can see more of the top view of this guy here. Just an amazing beautiful foliage plant. So that last photo is the last photo I took. That catches us up to this current day of the Silver Bay. It is 
thriving. The only thing that's really changed is about probably a month ago when we really started to shift into the fall winter months. I noticed the sun was creeping farther and farther into my apartment and this plant that was only receiving indirect light during the summer was now getting blasted by direct sun. And after a couple weeks, I even noticed some of the leaves began to burn. Not sure if you can see that from the distance here on on the camera, but this is one of the leaves that was affected. It just, the leaf lost a lot of its saturation and began to look sort of this like gross yellowy color. And it wasn't anything to do with the water because I keep this guy watered pretty particularly. I'm very particular with watering it, but only when it needs it. But this guy was getting blasted by the sun and I'm pretty sure that it it got sunburned. So about a month ago, I moved it from that table to a corner that's a little bit less light intense. It does get indirect light throughout the day, probably about the same lighting conditions it was getting during the spring and summer. So I've just tried to move it out of that direct light and it has really appreciated that. It was not enjoying getting blasted by the sun. So that makes this plant just amazing for any corner, any lower light situation. Let's say you have a north facing window that never really gets that direct sun coming through. Well, an Aglaonema may be the perfect plant for that space. So that covers the journey that I've had with the Aglaonema Silver Bay. Let's talk a bit about the care information, which is very, very simple. But today, let's start with soil composition. I did get this guy in completely peat moss soil, but have transitioned it into a nice, fluffy, airy mix. This guy is in my standard aeroid mix, which is a mix of cocoa chunks, orchid bark, perlite, pumice, Leca charcoal, and maybe just a handful or two of some cocoa peat to give the media some moisture retention. Once I moved it into this very aerated, fluffy, light mix, I noticed the leaves really began to perk up and fill with life. This plant was probably not getting enough oxygen to the roots because of that very dense thick peat moss soil that it was in. So once I moved it into an airier mix with better drainage, this plant was really beginning to thrive. So I would say if you have yours in standard peat moss, try moving it into a slightly more aerated mix and your plant may really thank you for it. I've noticed almost all of my plants have responded amazingly to having a bit more access to oxygen in the soil and with better drainage. The only other thing that I did regarding this guy was the same potting mistake I made with my bird of paradise by moving it into a slightly too large of a pot and then I did have to move it back into a smaller pot which is in now. It was in the same, I think it was probably an 8 inch pot but now it is back into a 6 inch pot. So it's a bit more snug in there and I found the aglaonema enjoys being a bit root bound so I intend to leave it in this pot for quite a long time. And you can see a plant of this size in a pot this size is pretty good. I would imagine it could get even bigger in this same sized pot. So that kind of shows you you don't need a huge pot to have a huge plant. A lot of plants actually prefer to be a bit more root bound in their pots. So next on the care list would be lighting. We did cover pretty much all of this so we will breeze right through this. So this guy does sit about 10-15 inches away from the south facing windows currently. During the spring and summer months it was in about the same condition but I do not set it anywhere where it's going to get more than an hour of direct sun throughout the day. So this guy is in a pretty shady corner and it tends to like that for the most part. And the final care requirement here is watering. This guy does get watered once the soil has completely dried out. Aglaonemas do like to completely dry out and their leaves will be a very good tell sign that they need water. They will become very flimsy. They will just bend and like end in half very easily. The stems will become a little bit flimsy. They won't have any sort of strength to them. So it's very easy to notice when this guy needs water. This guy is big enough that I'll just take him into the bath tub and let the shower run on it for 10-15 minutes, let it fully drain, and then place it back into the saucer. Watering is very simple. I do fertilize this guy once a month during the growing season. As long as it's growing, I will continue to fertilize it. But now that we're moving into the fall winter months, I am going to cut off fertilizing until we get back into spring. Especially here in Chicago, it is lots of gray skies, gloomy days through the winter, so I don't expect a ton of growth from any of my plants 
plants during this time. So they're just going to be chilling, growing some probably slightly smaller leaves, but that's okay. They are resting and waiting for spring. But that about does it for my plant spotlight of the Aglaonema Silver Bay. I highly, highly recommend finding and getting an Aglaonema for yourself. They are very enjoyable and for the most part, easy plants to care for. I think that's going to do it for this plant spotlight. If you have stuck around this long, be sure to go into the description and give my TikTok Liam's plants a follow. I do post some shorter 10, 20, 30 second videos on there, which are all plant related, some sort of highlights versus spotlights, very quick, and they're just about sort of showing off the plant versus talking a lot about the plant. So if you're in need of some more short form content from me, go ahead and head into the description and check out my TikTok, Liam's Plants. Other than that, I really hope you guys enjoyed this plant spotlight. Thank you guys so much for all the support on this channel. I know that it is just the beginning here, but seeing the amount of just organic views that this, these videos have been getting is amazing. The fact that there are this many other plant people who are in the community is amazing, so I'm really glad to be here. Thank you guys so much, and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.